Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to talk to you about, again, the Canon EOS R, but more importantly about fellow YouTuber Caleb Pike of DSLR Video Shooter. But no worries, the first thing I want to tell you is that he is as lovely a person on the phone as he is on his YouTube channel. Now, I really like and respect Caleb's work. I bought his camera guide for the GH5 and found it very helpful. Those of you who know him know he's very straightforward, calm, and puts out really solid content. But after I watched his Why Everyone is Wrong About the Canon ESR, I reached out to him on Twitter. Hey guys, this is Kayla with DSLR Video Shooter, and in this video, we're going to talk about why I think a lot of people are wrong about the brand new EOS R. And not five minutes later, we were on the phone chatting about what each of us thought of the R so far. The reason I reached out to him is that as I watched him on his video switch from the Panasonic GH5S to the Canon EOS R using the exact same Sigma 18 to 35 lens, I love how Caleb wanted to control that variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out my GH5S, which is what you're looking at, and we're going to throw in the EOS R using the exact same lens, which is the Sigma 18 to 35. So let's go ahead and swap things out real quick. You can check out the specs uh, here as to what I'm doing on the GH5S. We're going to be shooting with 10 bit there and then 8 bit internal C log on this puppy. So let's go ahead and switch out the cameras. I was shocked at how much better the micro four thirds footage looked to me than the full frame on the EOS R. I'm not talking about pixel peeping here, though. I am talking about looking at my 15-inch MacBook Pro screen at, I don't know, 4 a.m. in the morning, bleary eyes and all. I was so stunned that then I did pixel peep. First, I tried to find a frame from each camera that was close in terms of image size, angle, and expression, where the impact of motion blur would be minimal. I did a screen grab of each. Uh, of course, I dropped it into a Final Cut Pro 10 timeline. After that, I laid one image on top of the other in order to use the transform function to conform them to make them really line up as best I could. Then. I trimmed each image so that I could line up the two screen grabs, each as one side of Caleb's face. Boom. The 18-month-old Micro Four Thirds camera shredded the brand new full-frame sensor at 4K, though I was watching it on my 5K Retina iMac at 1080 because YouTube didn't offer anything higher. But then I thought to myself, what if it's just a depth of field or focus point thing? So I did the same thing, only now I reversed which camera was showing which side of Caleb's face. Boom again. Now, I thought there might be other things at play. I thought I might simply be dead wrong. I thought maybe I didn't isolate motion blur. So that's when I reached out to Caleb. I'm delighted to tell you, he watches my stuff too, which is really nice. I asked him about the tests. We talked about the results. He told me what he wanted to do differently as he continues to work with the R over the next six weeks. He told me, for example, that he changed the key light to better suit Canon's C log, but felt he'd blown out the background, had created a bad lighting ratio, and wanted to redress that. He told me that he'd set up both cameras for single point autofocus and set it to the face. But while with the GH5S, he could just use the app to tap on his face and be good to go, when he moved the Sigma over to the R, 
It seemed to him that his shirt was in focus a lot of the time rather than his face. Is this a camera thing, lens thing, adapter? To be determined. Finally, he told me that he realized he was much more comfortable and familiar with Panasonic's V-Log than he was with Canon's C-Log, and that might have been an issue as well. This was such a really good conversation, so affirming. In response, I wondered if next time it might make sense to use Rec. 709 as a way to take his familiarity with V-Log out of the equation. I suggested he might use a GH5 rather than a GH5S because it's $600 cheaper than the S or the R and does have in-body image stabilization and is thus a better measure of relative value. I thought it would be great if he got a second Sigma 18 to 35 so that he could record simultaneously and set not only focus but zoom them individually so that image size would be identical and the two sides of his face perfectly synced. Motion blur would not be an issue. I suggested he might then swap the lenses to assess the possible impact of copy to copy variation. And of course, maybe sit still for a bit longer just to make sure that motion blur could definitively be ruled out as a contributing factor. Then we talked a little business. I'm used that Canon should not have defined its objectives in terms of what they wanted. I suspect he's right, by the way. I think this is how Canon probably sees it. But instead, should have regarded those things as constraints on the more appropriate and sustainable objective of delivering the most delightful and valuable experience possible for its customers. I love this kind of thing. Bottom line, of course, Caleb is on it big time. Didn't need me for that. We agreed that we'd reconnect after Photokina. I have no idea what he will actually do for his next battery of tests, nor precisely when, other than whatever he delivers. It will be classic Caleb. Thorough, even-handed, and very educational. I'm looking forward to it. In fact, this was such a buzz that we also agreed to collaborate on something else I'm really excited about, Though at this juncture, I will tell you only that, of course, there will be three of us. Three blind men and an elephant, right? Maybe not blind, maybe not wise, but calm? Hold that. No. Okay, I'll tell you who it is. I can't contain myself. He's another fellow YouTuber, one of my favorites, and someone I'm now privileged to call friend. I, I really dig him. That's Ted Forbes of The Art of Photography. I have a topic I want to offer up for discussion today, and it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Obviously, I've done a lot of videos lately on the camera announcements that have been coming out, as have hundreds of thousands of other people on YouTube, it seems. And it's an exciting time. It's something that everybody's excited about. I'm excited about it. The whole idea of the possibility of having new tools and new options to do what it is that we do with visual communication is very exciting. But now, hold that thought. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. You guys continue to be just incredible, knowledgeable, inspiring, funny. I mean, you're a joy, truly. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Grab one or both of our new Hold That Thought t-shirts you wanted us to put up at our new 3bmepthreadless.com store. Support our work by using our affiliate links down below in the show notes, dropping us coffee money via our PayPal link down below in the show notes, or even better than that, we invite you to become a patron of our work over at Patreon. Link down below. We've created our Patreon page because we are stoked to bring you not only gear reviews, but with our What Were You Thinking and Good World Gone Bad series, historical, educational, artistic morsels, and longer form conversations, not interviews, with world-class photographers, curators, gallery owners, keepers of the legacy, folks like Elliot Erwitt, Anya Sear, Mark Lubell, Ethelene Staley, and friends like Brian Smith, Paul Giroux, Nino Rakicevich, and more. We'd really like you to join us to deliver this kind of content regularly. Your support on Patreon will really help us ramp it up. In which case, as always, we thank you for it.
That's it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time. <laughs>